Okay. Oh, jeez. Welcome to the stream, every pony. That's what I'm going to say from now on. Hey, Cos Ross, you're saying help, Duke. I'm watching people drink inadvisably and dying of laughter. Well, I can't do that and make you laugh more, but I can bring some dos to your life. And sorry if I sound lame, I just went on a walk and I'm covered in sweat and sunblock and heat. And hopefully not skin cancer, but hopefully lots of vitamin D. Okay. Do I sound okay? Press 1 if I sound okay. Uh, don't press anything if I don't sound okay, because this is as good as I can do. Sweat and sunblock, summer's new flavor. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Um, so the first thing I actually want to do with DOSBox is just check if there's an easy way to cheese it and have STD out go to um, a file. So uh, that IP version 6 maximalism, what? What did I do? Huh? I don't know. I guess it just, this is like the default Ubuntu. I don't even have IP version 6 here. Okay. Let me just get a bit more comfortable. Um, it's kind of hot actually. I have IP version 6 on the VM. Does that help? Well, it's not here. I can tell you that. Okay, I, I think I can think fine now. Just a little bit hot, you know. Why did they skip IP version 5? They didn't. Next question. Does that explain, does that, does that give you an answer? Or does that just confuse you more? Because IP version 5, 7, 8, and 9 do exist. Okay, serial 2. We're going to set that to be a log. Can I dummy to say why are we not using them? That's a good question. The answer is, in fact, that IP version 5 through 9 were part of a competition of various different successes to IP version 4, and IP version 6 was selected. Um, so they just did it that way. Whew, okay, what if I just set this to? Can I can I use an actual socket for this? Okay, let's wind up. Uh, wait, real port com one, real port ttys zero. Can I just? I don't know what I want here. I'll worry about it later, I think. It wants a PTS, and I managed to do this before, and it's, I don't know. Let's go back to the DOS, all the way to the DOS, DOS, DOS. Here, up here, that's where it is. Do you hear any horrible fan noise? So, uh, Isis wants Matthew Garrett to read Savage by System D and Erotic Unix Encounter. Well, that would be interesting. Hi, Sir Dialot. He says moaning. That's cool. That's the normal thing that you say to people. Yeah, it's good that there's no fan noise because I have a fan on. Oh, that's right. I was going to reformat this code because uh, 
I can't figure out how to do spaces with Vim in this, so I'm just going to switch it to use tabs. Um, and I'm going to reformat using real Vim. Better a fan than a fire? Yeah, well the smoke's not too bad outside. Oh god, that's not... Why do you have to open it in X term, the worst term? Topical joke. Yeah. You want a handshake? Or is that too... That's, that's like very topical. I don't think anyone will ever know what that means if I ever post this video up. Okay, so if it fails to connect... Watch... Uh, Alright, sorry, I got distracted. I thought... I thought I was doing coding, but I'm just... Okay, so there's no two spaces, it's all tabs now. Good. Um, horrible, but good. I hate tabs, but I think I deserve them in this case. Somewhere a Python fan just died. Look, if you're going to talk to me about Python, just don't at me. Use three tabs, uh, three spaces. That's not even a power of two. Tabs are the one true way. What? Am I the... Am I wrong? Am I out of touch? No, it must be my chat. Did I double in... Did I double... I double tabbed it all. Great, I have to fix that. Great. Fine. It's completely fine. Nothing a bit of line noise can't fix. Or watch this. I'll change every second, or every twice tabs to a single tab, and that didn't do anything. And what's this? This is now spaces. Huh. Okay, well, it seems that the Whatcom Vim will actually convert. What the hell is going on? All right. I just sat there. It doesn't have that. Okay. What happens when I hit tab in this? Just tell me now. Okay. Test tab ing. Okay. And then I hit backspace. What does that turn into? Because whatever that is, I want it. That turns into a tab. But this over here is not a tab. It wasn't a tab. And Mmm, ouch. Um, okay, maybe it's smart. It could be smart, but I didn't have any spaces there before. Okay, so that, yeah, I'm pressing the buttons. That looks like a tab. So then if I just do something like clean up three, and then I tab, test, and then I go back. Okay, so I don't know what that was. Um, so yeah, we have a cleanup function here, and that just quits. Uh, probably want to return a different error code. Smart is the only definition of smart nowadays, and you put smart in quotes. Yeah. Do you want to buy a Google Nest? No. Look at look at this. Look. Tabs. Tabs. Half tabs. Why? 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 Okay, so it, it uses tabs when I hit tab, but if I go to a new line, it auto indents with two spaces, and that's Fine. Only true cat girls go full AMD plus arch. Am I mostly cat girls now? Yeah, this is smart, isn't it? Side dialogue. Side dialogue. You know what? Just shift width. Let's set that to eight. Uh, and this should have like some expand tab. 
please. No, there's no expand tab. Jumpy scroll. I really wish they like. There's no button to get more information. I suppose I'd have to have the the manual. Magic. Okay. Should I turn magic off? Is that what it is? Menus. Mode. Modeless. Dear God, no. Quiet. Real tabs. I have real tabs on. Okay, so. So if I go there now. Yeah, and that shouldn't be spaces. Good. I fixed it. Now, how do I save the options? Settings. Save. No, there's uh, nothing. As opposed to what fake tabs? Yeah, no. Nah. I think the I think the rule with Vim is that it inserts tabs when there's eight spaces, and you can turn that off. But if it's not set to that, it'll insert spaces. Okay, so let's set RC here to one. Damn, this mic stand shaking. I should like actually fix that sometimes. Sometime. And then we go to clean up. Um, and then while true, that should probably be something else, right? I have a bunch of junk here I don't need. And that shouldn't be there. Okay. While true. So when do we actually break out of this? I can't. Got to work around them chunky packets. Yeah. So you break out of it here. Do we break out of this anywhere else? No. So we should probably have. Yeah, let's just uh, make a process packets function. Process packets. And that will need the socket. Yeah, okay. Um, it really pisses me off that this Vim doesn't have visual mode. I just have to like eyeball the number of lines that I'm gonna have to copy. And then we're going to put this in process packets. I think it's TCP socket. And then we're just going to unindent 11 lines. Yeah, there we go. And so this will return one on, an, on a close. Ah, uh, sorry, it returns zero, otherwise it just returns. Wait, no, wait. Yes. Yes, okay. So while process packets, then we have our packet there. This is some sweet shit I can't understand here. Um, crap, I remembered something that I thought about after the stream and it was important, but I forget it now, so it couldn't have been that important, right? So this just echoes a packet. So we should probably process that packet. Should you go buy some ice cream? What for? Is this a, is this a meme? You just ate Two bowls of homemade lentils. Why? Th thoroughly? Which you spice? Thoroughly? Why? You don't have to do that. Okay, so let's just delete that branch because we don't need it. 
slight ingredient mismatch. So you didn't spice it on purpose. You're not actually that insane in terms of quantity. So you like, you forgot to convert it between cups and liters or what? Okay, this looks okay. I think maybe. You added too much cayenne. Nice. I'm proud. Okay. See if this even works. Should work. I just uh, refactored it a bit. Um, if I can... Someone set the witch at a toxic? I don't know who toxic is. You're in a very silly mood? That's good. But don't get too silly. Oh, you, someone made a music video of Witcher with the song Toxic by Britney Spears. That's a decent, decent mix. Why am I putting in my real password? Uh, okay. Let's try and connect this to what I'm doing. W make it. And so if this works, I'm just gonna have to add some buffers. Um, a line but Should I share a buffer between incoming lines and outgoing lines? That seems fair, right? Seems fair. Because I'm just going to assume that I have one line in, one line out. But I will wrap it in some functions to change that later. Okay, but... And then we just run our netcat like uh, test. I get test back. Hello there. What's up? Cause a 10 bell peppers and I didn't even notice. Okay. And let's just see that old X works. It failed to connect. So that should clean stuff up. Here we go to old X. Bell peppers aren't spicy. Get out of here, my boy. <laughs> They don't taste as much? Well, you know what? You know what? You're wrong. I will die on this hill. Okay, I don't know what this issue even is. Uh, my MTU, what was I setting that to? That should be at, what did I set Slurp's MTU at? 128. So, we're going to always have to set the MTU to what the connection's MTU is. That's fine. Um, let's see. Init stack. Let's just put this in a, in a uh, connect option. So, let's do socket. And we're going to do connect to server and that will take the socket and then we'll just dump that shit into a to a function because why the why the h not huh int connect socket be socket sock and that seems fine Uh, sorry. There we go. They synced it up perfectly. That's good. I always love a good sync up perfectly. It's like Britney came out of retirement to do a very weird alt soundtrack for The Witcher. Britney's retired? Don't tell me that. Say it isn't so. 
Okay, the MTU stuff. Definitely. Uh, actually, I'm going to just... Hmm. I'm not sure if I should have this or where the socket is. I'll make it a... Granny Brittany? No! No! Carly is better anyway. Yeah, Kylie is better. But that's... I'm biased because, like, I'm Australian and Kylie is, like, a hero to me. Kylie Minogue. Um, okay, so... Uh, use uh, customizable stuff. Yeah, so I'm just going to make this. Yeah, see? Dialot knows about Kylie Minogue. She's just called Kylie in Australia. It's very strange. Uh, I'm not going to go full Steve Owen. That dude was... Had a lot of strange opinions. Alright. Let's just clean up this. Server address, test port, source port, milliseconds. Um, yeah, I'll put that at the top there. No, I'll put it in the direction I use. Uh, MTU. The thing is, is that if you don't have the MTU properly, then it's going to break. And that's not going to be cool. You forgot what she's saying, but musically she's better? Yeah. That, this guy gets it. Um, why is it complaining about RC? Oh, that's right, because... I'll just set that to 1 by default, because... Whoa. What happened here? No, that's the wrong function. Um, and then let's make it so it is RC0 at the bottom. Okay, this looks decent. Connect to server. Why isn't that? Why doesn't it understand that that's what I have? Okay. Connect socket. Um. You know what? I'm just going to change that to setup socket. And I'll also just dump this crap in it. Right. Hmm. It, it has an environment file. I'm not sure if I should, like, actually take a look at that. Do I have it here? Butterfly meme? Is this refactoring? Yeah! Huh? Uh. Oh, I think the environment file might be in C drive. Maybe? mtcp.config? Definitely, that's got to be a pack file, right? Yeah, so can I set the MTU there? Is that something I can do? Hang on a second. Let's just figure this out now so I don't have to... I'll do it later. Um, so it would be in utils, it should be. Pack it in. MTU. All right. So it passes all that junk. Okay, so I don't need to set the MTU there. But does DOS have an environment? It should, right? I'm just trying to figure out how to set up a configuration file for this one day. I mean, I probably don't need to. Uh, and let's just set that MTU to 5, 1500. 
uh, no, 128, because that's what I've decided on using, so it can pull out some bugs. All right, well, I don't know why I just did CD dash. Okay, we're ready to sort this into buffers, I think. No, I don't want to write to it. I should probably test that it actually does get the MTU. Like, it actually sets the MTU value. Yeah. No, I don't want to edit that file. So, where's the MTU file? Um, let's just print F here. No! It, the tabs. All right, how do we... I have to solve this and I have to solve it now. So how do I set Whatcom um, starting up? Does it read an RC file? There are a number of files, config current directory, add to executable itself, and directories defined, oh right, wait, ed? No, v, why is it ed? Whatever. So, let's just go head on over to our workspace, and uh, how do you create files in Linux without using the terminal? Do I, am I supposed to Touch? No, without using the terminal. I'm supposed to use... Why would you not use the terminal? I'm trying to be educational here. Programming system tools in a file manager? Okay, look, this is the file manager I have. I don't see any create new file button. Like, you should be able to right click, but there's no space anymore. Like, I can't click here. I can't click here. Do I have to turn list view off? Icon view. Create document. Okay, yeah. So, wait, file new. Oh! Sweet. I feel enlightened. I'm still pissed about G. I've been, every, ever, listen, this is a deep, feeling about Linux, and I don't know if anyone's going to get it, but ever since I've switched to Linux, I've been really pissed at GTK's file save dialog, because if you select a, file, a folder by accident, and you try to save something, it'll open the folder instead. And you can't click away from it, so you have to press up. And it pisses me off to no end. And they won't fix it, or they haven't fixed it. I don't know. I. It hurts. You know? It will never be the year of the Linux desktop until they fix the GDK's file dialog. Okay, so this should be add.configuration. And what can I put in the configuration file? Does it tell me? Startup script contains configuration. Okay, so is it set? No, is it is it set? Okay, so it is set. Set. Shift width equals five, so set shift width equals eight. So look, I'll show you. If I go to save as, and I'm like, wow, I want to create a new file here. Um, let me name it ed1.configuration. And like, uh, no, it's when you make a directory. Okay, so we're like, I want to save it in a new directory. Oh my god, they fixed it. Oh my god. Wait, is it that when I move it away from that? Like, it's selected here, but if I do add.config and it's say, I don't know, they must have fixed it. 
I don't know. Maybe I'm just angry at nothing. If you just just type, it starts to search everywhere. Yeah, the real actual anger that I also have, and that I keep hitting with this stream, or something else, is that I can't turn this into text here. I want to type a path, and it doesn't let me. I have to... How do I... I can't. Maybe there's like an option somewhere. Okay. I mean, it's things like this that make me want to move back to back to Windows, you know? You know how it is? <laughs> you know? I used to use Linux until the until the GTK pushed me all the way to Windows, is what I'm saying. Throw baby out with the bath water bathtub bathroom whole house. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see if this worked. No. Please. It's empty. Okay. If there's an option, it's in some obscure program. <laughs> My ship is on fire, better sink it. I don't know, is... It's empty! Again! Why is it emptying this? I, I don't understand. Scripts. No, starting up. Oh. So we have set variable value. So there's, I've been specifying that wrong. And we want to do ed.config. And I want to put the, the set thing in it. Ed.config set shift width for. And right save. It didn't save. What the heck? Is it saving the contents that was already there? It's still there. What is happening? Did I break something by editing a file outside DOSBox? I might have. Okay. So it doesn't see add.configuration. Uh, so it can't save it, I guess. Let's try this again. Set the shift with the four there and now let's try this um, go down here it doesn't it doesn't matter maybe I need to like put a colon in front of it set shift width 4 it doesn't work there. Set shift width equals four. I'm setting it to four. Why am I setting it to four? What am I doing? Why did I expect different? At least now it should be doing something different. But setting it to four is what it already was. Oh, set shift width equals 8. Okay, so equals 8 might work. No! Oh my god, I hate this. I hate this so much. Okay, let's find the friggin' manual. Whatcom v um, vimasi? Oh my god, I hate this. I hate this so much. You doing anything? Yeah, that's how it is, Cos. What? Why? Do I... T Topney Dean need input? Is that it? No. What? Why? How does... Why would it let Google do that? Okay. 
what from the config file. I feel like using Google is the wrong thing to do. Big Daddy Google indeed. Open Whatcom V configuration file. Is this it? Add.config. Set something. Okay, so is it a special syntax? Alright, set shift width equals to 8. So if I put that, will that work? No. Why? Why isn't it reading my add configuration? Okay, I'll just copy it to the Whatcom directory then. Copy add.configuration C drive open Whatcom wait dev open Whatcom bin why is it not tab completing that? Dev open open whatcom. Oh my god, I can't live without tab complete, so I'm pissed now. Devel, great, I put it in Devel. Devel open whatcom. Ed that is that what it is? What? What is all this? Um, so bin w, does it go in there? Add. Better no tab complete than those programs where you can't move on a written line. What type of programs are those? Please tell me this works. No. Oh, do you mean like there's no read line or? Jesus Christ, I'm sweating so bad right now. Please just tell me how to do this. Ed dot configuration. Okay, let's just go to the open Whatcom junkyard. Open what com help add that Luigi's interpreter that doesn't have like actual you know up down command dot help Lua works as usual but Luigi's says no there's there's a lot of okay so add that has an add file Ed path equals slash ed path history file. Okay, so is it like where's the history file being set? Okay, we're gonna just open a terminal. No up down. You have to rewrite the line line to change stuff. Yeah, it's not good. What was it? Vi dot vi dot h o w okay. So it's in add that. Wait, what's my path? Echo path. Yeah. So it should be here. You know what? Let's just edit it here. Um, does this file have comments? There. Oh my god, my stream died, did it? Did I die? I don't think so. Jesus Christ. 
a message because he should know. Okay, get back to this. All right. So let's try now. Is my stream better now? I don't know what's happening. Maybe my brother is like downloading stuff. Okay, let's move over. There, fixed, maybe. All good. It died, but then it reconnected. So I don't know what's up with that. I'm sure that this is probably just going to be a one-off thing and it's definitely not gonna happen again. But I might just quickly check. Yeah, uh, my hard drive is fine, I think. Thumbs up. All right, let's try and edit this again. I've set the shift width. I'm sweating bad. The sunblock on my skin is, it's, it's happening all right. Um, I'm forgetting what I'm doing. It still doesn't work. Why? Why are you doing this to me? I don't understand. What come you embarrassing yourself? Uh, is it not even being set here? Settings. What is shift width set to? Four. Why? What if I set it like in the... Is this the day we see a full cos style meltdown from Duke? Nah. Just like... Just disappointed, you know. Because um, what comes embarrassing me in front of everyone? Shift width equals four. So what if I just, no. Is that where it's gonna read from? No, it's not reading it from anywhere. Oh my God, this text editor is a piece of trash. This is, uh, Okay, maybe I just have to grep for it. And it started so well too. Maybe. Is it debug? Can I just use mode lines at the bottom? Does it have mode lines? Um, why would you not load from Ed? Include file. Maybe it's because Ed path isn't set. What if I said Ed path? To where I am now. Set Ed path. Um, C drive dev bot. Okay. 
and then we just do it now. And now there's no syntax highlighting, but there's also no tab. And it can't find any settings. So it was looking that. Mm. Okay, so. Alright, I can't tab complete there because it's not a, its own thing. Add that. So what if we try open Whatcom 2's add path? Well, that fixed my problem. Oh, sorry, V. I want V. Okay, that launches faster. But that, is that going to fix my problem? No, it's not. It never will. There's no save option here. Is there mode lines? Mode list, that's false. Shift width, 4. The next stream is writing DOS Vim? No. There's already enough Vim for DOS. I just might have to switch up my editor. I mean, there's no reason that it has to be like this. Maybe, maybe it's my fault. And I didn't read something here, so let's try and read it again. So it searches for the files in the editor executable itself. Current directory. Yep. Um, is it edbind? Do I want edbind? Is that what I want? I don't know. That sounds really damn shifty, to be honest. But hey, I have nothing to lose. So what do we have in my edge.configuration here? Shift width equals 8. Matthew Garrett is considering streaming getting drunk and reading the SystemD porn book. Uh, I feel like that would attract the wrong type of people. Let me just check that my ed configuration is actually going to work. Um, where is it? You'll donate to Planned Parenthood? That's cool. Stack Overflow. Okay. Alright. Why? Did I use it wrong? And my, okay, so I did it wrong. Um, D add dot configuration stack overflow too, huh? Well, that's fine. Loading of set shift with eight equals failed. Why? What are you racist? Why are you doing this, computer? Okay, okay, I'm not going to be angry, we're just going to start doing deductive reasoning on this. Um, can I ruin this page? Um, add path equals add path. Can I set it there? Can I set it at the bottom after everything else? user.v? There's a user.v file? Um, let's try editing that then. v c drive devel, I'm going to add that user.v set expand no, shift width equals 8, please 
have mercy. I just want my friggin' It works. It works. Oh. Okay, that's a bit weird. Is it just me or does open Watcon 2's Vim start faster? No. ASMR, no. I don't want ASMR ever. I don't get it. Is it like I know it's not a I know it's not a sex thing, right? People don't go to ASMR for sex. They have like this weird tingling sensation and they're like, oh, it gives me like feelings up my spine. But it just really weirds me out for some reason. And I don't quite understand why. Okay, so we have this solved. Um, I forget what I was doing. Set up socket, process packets. I don't know, I was going to add code, but I forget now. Oh, I was going to move some code, wasn't I? No, okay, well. Huh. And let's just make clean up socket then. And then we're just gonna. This is gonna be a void function. There. And we can do clean up socket return zero. And then this can be clean up socket return one. If not, set up socket. Wait. Yeah. Okay, let's W make this and run it. And then we can do buffering. Nope. Um, Clean up socket. Sock. You know what? Let's just make this a variable, okay? Make this a global. You know, I've I've been writing a little bit of C in the past few days, and I've been trying to pass variables around, but what's the friggin' point? I'll just keep all the variables in a single file and it will be modular that way, right? Like, am I crazy? Global variables seem fine if you constrain them to a single file. I suppose they're not global then, but, you know, it's making my life easier. Clean up socket, clean up socket, return one, return zero. Okay. You're not going to lie at me saying it works in a whisper voice is your jam. Please don't clip that. I don't want to be the next... Is there someone... Is, that, is there like a Linux ASMR? I don't want that. Okay. It's finally time to get the buffers up. So... It's time to actually get the code base separated up, and this is going to be where we do it. We're going to have this bot.cpp file, 
and I'm actually going to probably rename it to something but this file is going to be like for all the actual network connectivity and then we're going to have a buffer in memory now I have to decide if I'm going to have multiple buffers um, I'm not going to have multiple input buffers because I'm going to be just uh, I don't have to have multiple input buff um, sorry I don't have to have multiple output buffers I can just have multiple lines in a single output buffer because I can send multiple lines in a single output great fine solved all right so let's see how are we going to write this I'm thinking that this you missed your chance to clip it's gone forever delete my VOD delete my Twitch burn the files I've recorded okay so I'm thinking that we're gonna have a function that's going to I don't know because okay if we get a single packet it might contain more data than we can buffer so we're gonna have to loop over something like while while um, incoming new line or something so let's just pseudocode this Throw, the, throw out the baby with the bathwater, bathtub, bathroom, whole household, town, whole state. Yeah. It's like the, the, you know, it's like what people suggest with Queensland. Is it too soon to joke that this is how the fires begin? Um, fires have been going for months. So, I don't know. It's just how things are now. You know, where did it, was there ever a time when Australia wasn't on fire? I don't know. I don't remember it. Don't make it political. And remember, if you're a woman and you're angry at Scott Morrison for coming to your town for photo ops and not even bothering to listen to your concerns, don't be hysterical, I guess. I guess that's the moral of the story. <laughs> Clipping the queens, I think. <laughs> oh no, it's actually political. All right, incoming new line. So we're gonna have to have a function that oh, this, this is bending my head. Okay, so let's simplify this a little bit. Let's just open up Vim. So we have multiple buffers here. We have uh, packets. And then we have um, car line, and then we have car output lines. So that's a bit weird. And we're going to have like some pointers. So it's um, not actually very like I'll have pointers to them for the buffering stuff and the output stuff but with this set of data we have to take multiple packets so we're looping through waiting for packets so let's say wait for packets um, while there is packets buffer data into line if we have a uh, new line yeah if we have a new line then we will uh, do bot stuff and then I think we were output stuff yeah output output lines so while there is output output lines 
So does this make sense? Is this like... Um, uh, and a loop that would be good for buffering this. That's fine. If you fuck up clipping, just remember you're not alone. Okay, so... Ah. <sighs> I'm thinking this looks fine. Oh no. I'll have to look at that later. So, we wait for packets, because while we don't have any packets, we might as well not do anything. Um, we could actually probably sleep to avoid CPU use. No, yes. It looks like Python, but you'd be mistaken because this is pseudocode. So while there are packets, we will buffer the data into the packet, uh, into current line. And if we have a new line, we will do bot stuff. So that seems reasonable to me. So let's kind of figure out how to do this. Oh no. ISIS is going to read bedazzled by blockchain and erotic blockchain transaction if Matthew Garrett reads savaged by system D. I mean, uh, I'm okay with that. I don't like blockchains and since I don't like it, I'm going to be okay with it. As long as I like it, then it's fine. But if I don't like it, then it's not fine. Dear Mouse, he says, scrolling through science and text, he does twitch what, dear God, what kind of uh, masochist are you, man? I don't know. I'm sitting here in like 30 degree temperature, sweating, covered in sunblock, trying to think about how to buffer packets, but this is the hardest part. Like I have, I have the ability to make connections. I just need to, you know, I'm a few months into this project. I just need to buffer some packets to lines. Um, yeah, I think the heat's clearly screwing with you. Yeah. Uh, do you know how to buffer packets? Which is, you can think of the packet as a byte stream, really. Um, do you know how to buffer that into lines? I mean, if I put it like that, it makes sense. It's fairly easy to do that. Um, I would just have to loop through each character, right? I'd copy each character. The problem is, is that that seems inefficient unless I kind of, unless I put the, um, the buffering, unless the buffering stuff calls the actual bot fl uh, flushing and that should be fine. The closest you get to low level is Golang. How's Golang? Is Golang good? I've seen Golang and I'm not happy with a few decisions it makes, but it seems fine. I think Coz hates Golang. So let's think about this code. We have our have our packet part. Process packets. So I'll just ignore that there's like a double indentation here. See, that doesn't want to hurt you. Yeah, but... But if it doesn't want to hurt you, then how can you trust it to love you? It'll never spray its buffer... Oh shit, no. Oh god, ignore that. Okay, that... That almost went lewd, and I don't feel comfortable. I was thinking about memory spraying of video card drivers from buffer overflows, and that's all. 
There's nothing. <laughs> I will not finish the sentence. I don't want to get cancelled. All right. So we have this junk here, and I think this is going to be our copy loop. Not the weirdest thing you've heard today? What else did you hear? Did you hear anything cool on the internet? Was it on the internet? Okay, so I think we're actually going to have a process buffer thing. Data. And this is where we would do the copying. So... Yeah, we'd have a loop here. You have the mental scars to prove it? Cool, show them. Unzip your face like a like some kind of monster. Okay, process packets doesn't really do much, but that's just for the sake of getting this indentation away. Personally wrote Savage by System D and Bedazzled by Blockchain is a legitimate technical author. Yeah, I can believe that. I think I saw their website. I think they also wrote like a version of... I think he wrote a book about Ed or something, but then he wrote an identical copy that didn't use female pronouns because people were upset. At it. I don't know. Okay, so... You went eight packet. Yeah, it seems fine. Let's shove that up there because I'm just pretending that I'm writing ANZC. I don't know why I'm even caring about portability, portability at this point. I'm gonna hopefully write the actual DOS part in uh, assembly, which is something I haven't really revealed. But uh, there you go. You like assembly? So we're going to return 0, return 1. Did I grab that extra code? That's ghost and queue. Yeah, so I need those three things. I guess only a technical writer could write Chuck Tingle parodies on system D and blockchain. I can get parodies of blockchains because they're they're easily parry to be parody material um actually no i sh this should be here i should be outputting the du the the data here no i'll do that in a bit let's just empty this loop first while well, process packets and then we'll actually make the loop more like get new line or get next line. Okay, so let's open this up. It is another level of nerddom DLMLC. I don't want to call you Mousy for short because that seems like a bit too intimate. That seems like something you would call like your close best friend if you were a female. Like if I was a female calling. I don't know, just freaking heat. Okay, test. Test, test. Okay, that works. Why didn't it error when I when it tried to Yeah, what's up with that? It should be erroring. Mousy for short is fine. DLC obligatory. Damn it, my username is taken. Prefix. Ah, is that what you do? I just put two at the end of my username. Um, I guess I'm the lame one. So set up socket. Return socket connect. So I've set up socket. Oh, that should be not set up socket, I guess. You have a harpoon for whoever took Cos on Freenode? Dude, Cos is such a common name. Remote has closed quitting. 
Mousy 2 was taken too? Well, that's why you go for Mousy 3 then. Okay, I've broken something severely here because it should not be reaching that. Set up socket. Oh, did I remove my print about the socket? Yeah. It's not Boolean blindness. I did it myself. It's fine. Unable to connect to host. There. You're sensing a pattern, DLMLC? Yeah, so the trick is to just add, you increment the number at the end of your username until there's a free one. And so this can take days or months, but once you do it, you get a unique username. Alternately, what you do is you just generate a random number and put it at the end. But as long as it's not four digits, you doubled it? Do I mean recursion? Um, I guess you could write that recursively, but I'd hope it would be at least tal recursive. Because that's just shifting the bits. Okay, so I have that and we have this here. Mousy4096 is probably available. I don't know. I I would snap up all those powers of two in a heartbeat. Okay, so process packets. So the problem here is that greater than zero. Good. Fixed it. Registers mousy 4096 defensively. Uh, now nah, I'm good. I don't. I don't want it. I've already got a juke here too. Um. This looks so horrible. I can't. I can't do it like that. I'm just gonna have to have the while loop like that. That sounds like a challenge. What sounds like a challenge? What did I say? Did I say I was going to deal you? What did I do? Okay, so we have this this junk here, which reads in an IP packet. And I hate IP packets. Well, no, I don't hate IP packets. They're okay. Some of my best friends are IP packets. But these are not my friends here because if you look at if you look at this, I have to do like a whole bunch of calculations just to get the TCP payload. Yeah, DOS, BTC fly. Hello, do you like DOS? C plus plus programming with edit.exe. It's Vim, um, mainly because edit.exe takes way too long to load since I keep closing Vim. Okay, so we're just gonna... You like DOS? What's your favorite thing about DOS? Hello, Ariana. What's up? Let's see. So that's actually the sending stuff here. So we can ignore that. Your favorite thing about DOS is QBasic? Sweet, I haven't used QBasic. Maybe one day. Oh, the syntax here just kills me. Let's just... You think their caps lock key is broken? Well, have you ever used DOS? Because in DOS, you don't need the lower ASCII characters. You just need the high bits. <laughs> this ad brought to you by Microsoft. Please fund our antitrust. Uh, no, I don't know where I'm going. 
our anti antitrust legal defense where we're hemorrhaging money. We're sorry we bundled IE6. It was just a prank. A social experiment on whether people would buy web browsers. Turns out they don't. Yeah, terminate and stay resident programs are pretty cool. I haven't written one. Um, it would be fun to. I don't quite understand how DOS allocates memory that much. Mousy says, one of my old bosses made the same joke about Fortran, called it the shouty language. Yeah, um, lots of older languages are very shouty. I don't know why. I guess that's just how things were back then. People shouted. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to actually just loop through the data. So we're going to use a pointer for that. I think. No, we won't use a pointer. We're just going to use... No, I'll use a pointer and then I'll set this to be the max. Okay, so... Postgres SQL shouty too? Yeah, SQL is very shouty. Um, and equals user data plus. Wait, that's just. Um, and equals user data plus length. I think that's fair. Um, this doesn't look like it's going to work at all. Because I'm fairly sure there's an off by one error. The little bobby tails, tables. Yeah. So, the end of this is supposedly user data plus LAN. And that's because I'm taking the payload length of the IP stuff and removing the header. That makes sense. So a packet of zero would be plus zero here. And a packet of one would be plus one. Okay. <laughs> so only two difficult problems in computer science, cache, cache invalidation, naming things, and off by one errors. Yeah. Um, I think this is not going to go over. If anyone thinks this code is going to have an off by one error, then just tell me now. But I'm fairly sure that this here, this length code, is going to be like the actual bytes that are in there, and then end is going to be um, the one after it. So let's just do after. And then we'll loop until position isn't after. Um, and we might actually need to make that a negative one. So we can do while well, pause doesn't equals after and just have that at the top there. Um, that looks awful. I probably should have that something different. Now that can, this can be a do while loop. So what are we going to do? We're going to get a buffer for the line. Um, and we're going to share that around. So let's put it up here without global variables. And we're going to have it be a byte buffer. Because I haven't converted it into characters. Oh no, you had a buffer overflow. Not again. All right, you went eight, memory stomping. Uh, you know, if you program C, you can kind of ignore the memory stomping part. You just have to be very careful. For the record, like the one thing I don't like about Go and Rust at the moment, well, there's just two things. The first thing is they're not very portable compared to something like C. And the second thing is that they like they don't use libc to do syscalls. They just 
you know, do syscalls. They call it directly. They just call the function like the syscall. Clearly the solution to adding manage memory management problems is adding more memory. Yeah. Although there is a good argument for upping to 128 bits of memory addresses. If you can guess what the argument is, then I'll give you nothing, but you will feel good about yourself. All right, line buffer. And we'll just set that to be eight long, because then I can manually test it. Crap. Um, how am I going to copy this? I'd have to check if... Because now I have to have four pointers. I'm going to have to have the end of the line buffer. And now this. So... No, I'm going to have to have a global pointer for that because I will have to copy it from the packet. So, line buffer... Let's change that to line pause. And that can just start off as line buffer. And we'll just initialize this as zero. I don't know if you can even do that in this compiler. And we will do... Yeah, so we're going to have to check what character it is. Because if it's a new line, then we should flush the buffer. Because that way we just have a null terminated string. And flushing the buffer, that would require zeroing it. So what we should actually do is we should put, um, we should write a new line, uh, a zero. Um, otherwise, we will write pause and that will break that seems reasonable for each character in the packet buffer it will write it yeah and if it's a new line it will just write a null terminator instead now, we're going to have to do checks to make sure that line pause is less than or equal to line buffer plus size of line buffer. I think. So if the buffer is of size one, then obviously it would be plus that. So that would actually be the outside. So this should be a less than. Yeah, does that make sense? I don't know. Because that should be the side, that should be the end of it. Line buffer, because that starts with the first element, then plus that. Yeah, so that would be after it. Okay, so we're just going to quickly just define line end, line buffer plus size of line buffer. So if line pause is left, line end. And what I usually like to do is write it like a number line. So we'll have line end less than or equal to line pause. And so that can be part of our writing logic. And here flush buffer would mean um, handle line. Um, I wouldn't break it, would I? I would just set, um, I would, reset 
I would do line pause equals line buffer there. And this would be line pause plus plus equals pause. Ah, uh, sorry. That would be there. Ah, but that adds to it. So line pause would now be, um, yeah, at the end there. So we would have to assert there. Well, actually let's assert it after that. So if line end less than equal line pause, um, how am I doing my printing in this code? Am I using printf or fprintf? Yeah, we're doing that. go back up oh down to here I guess yeah um, oops oops turn that to SDDR um, line end line pause we might actually just make that an, an assert because then we get some more compile time stuff. Although, again, should that kill the bot because then someone can just send a big line? That's a good question that I asked myself. So what we might do is allow it to go out of bounds, but only write. Yeah. So we're going to do up here. We're going to uh, we'll have to do a bounce check, but for now, let's just assert that. That seems fine. Handle line. Yep. And that seems fine. So let's go down, let's make some handle line stuff. Did I put void in notice? Yeah. So let's copy. All this junk. Um, and we should start sending stuff. Data equals buff plus size of TCP data. No, we're just going to copy. Oh no, that is it. Um, buff plus size of TCP buffer. And so we're going to copy our line buff there. Let's just make a new macro there because what we can do is we can do line len and use pointer arithmetic there. So it'd be line buff minus, uh, sorry, line pause minus line buffer. And that would make sense, I think, since if they're the same, that would be zero. And that makes sense because nothing's been written. But if it's one, then it should be one, etc. Um, and yeah, we should add a zero, but we do that here anyway. We null terminate it, so that should be fine. And we set line lane there, outgoing socket and queue. All right, let's see how many errors this gets us. Handle line has not been defined. Okay, so I need to do a definition of that further up. Oh, one second.
Okay, I'm back. And it's still very hot. That's my life. Um, so let's see. Delete that. This doesn't have registers, no thanks. I don't want to save, I just want to get my code back. Handle line. And we should put that here. Fifty-five, sixty, seventy-five, ninety, ninety. So let's see, fifty-five line buffer, sixty. Y. Utter void though. And then seventy-five. That shouldn't be an error. Ninety. Assert. Yeah, I don't have assert, do I? I have to include assert dot h, I believe, for that. So let's go to the top of the file. And let's include assert.h. Lin buffer 7691. Okay, so I still didn't write that properly. What did I quote that around? At 91. That still doesn't assert properly, does it? If line end line pause and let's just not use asserts, we'll just do an error. And then we'll return. line buffer for turn one and then we'll just remove that header me talking about code 75 90 94 Let's try doing that. 90, 94. So do I need to wrap those? Let's just see if that helps. I don't know why I'm being mind blown by this. Expecting closing statement, but found colon syntax error on line 90. Okay, so line end, I put a thing there, that's why. Oh, that links now, okay. So let's see if this works. Test, nope, um, it's not outputting anything. But it is reaching that point. So can I overflow the buffer? Line buffer full. Gotcha. Shh, shut up, laptop. Okay. So the outgoing is not copying the actual buffer data. Mem copy data line buffer line line. Why not? It should be. Is the mem copy not working? What's the syntax for mem copy? Line buffer to data line length. Oh, could that be because, no, no, that wouldn't be why. 
So maybe line length isn't correct. Line pause minus line buffer. So maybe that's zero. Let's check if that's zero. We'll just put the size there. Um, line length. Oh, I'm using pointer arithmetic, I think. I'm not sure. Let's just see if that gets converted. But, oops. Um, let's see, two. Outgoing three. So that would include a new line, hopefully. No, that's wrong. If there's one character in the buffer, they should output one. Okay, I'll worry about that in a bit. It's not printing what I want it to print. And I hope it's not a number issue. So why is data not working? Let's print the line buffer. line buff that would be line buffer and that should be null terminated and would that not be copying ah, there we go that's the issue so it wasn't copying any characters I just copy pasted code and it got me thanks Let's see this. Test. Six. Okay. So if I specify nothing, which is just a new line, then it outgoes as two. So there's an off by one error there somewhere, but it's still not outputting the line buffer. So we're not writing anything to the line buffer. Hmm. It does know what the position is, but it's not handling it. So let's just see if I've accidentally set the no handle line runs before I set the line buffer to the original position. So what if I set what if I just print that here first? So we're just going to do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, new line six. Yep, so that's not working properly. And it's still not printing it. So we might have to just check our copy code over here again. So we have our position that starts at negative user data. No, that should start at user data. So that's one bug. After is user data plus land. That may be an off by one, but it still loops through it. So it's fine for now. If position is that, it sets the line position, the current line position value to that. Otherwise it sets it to that and it handles the line. So it definitely should be copying. 
And line polls should be the buffer, I think. Hmm. Let's go back to handle line and we'll just move this and instead of handling the line we'll just print that. So let's see. Possibly. No, it is handling it. So it does know that it's a new line and it does know the length because the pointer is incrementing. But it's not copying from the user data unless there's like a zero in front of it and that's truncating the string. That could be the case if I start from negative one. So let's just try that now. And that negative one might explain the off by one. So let's just see. But test. And that's five. That shouldn't be five. It should be zero. Oh, no, that includes the terminating null. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Testing. What's up? So that's too long. Um, I don't have a way to put new lines into the buffer, but I assume they would work. Oh, the line buffer is full. So the line buffer being full doesn't reset it, um, which is okay. It shouldn't. And now it's just not doing anything. So has it entered some kind of infinite loop? Does alt x work? Yeah. Hmm. Let's just look at that code. Why would it not be just constantly spamming? that it's outside that. It returns one and then yeah so that's definitely not the solution. Um, I should actually just set a flag somewhere. Well that is kind of a flag isn't it? It should check that at the start Yeah, let's check this. Here. And then we can do if pause equals new line. Then it can actually just reset the buffer. And then it can continue. That seems reasonable. Otherwise, it'll just do nothing. So that should handle long lines and ignore them. Hopefully. So we should be able to make like lines that are small, like test, ing. Then we do what's up. We do test again, ing, what's up. Okay, so that does in fact um, solve the issue of having very long lines and just being able to handle them. Okay, so we have line buffering, I think. Now, I say I think because I'm not sure. Well, it should definitely work. There's no reason why it wouldn't work if it's split across packets. Would it? Hmm. It could be that I've scoped the variables wrong. It shouldn't be, though. While we're doing that, let's just add the handle stuff back. No, that should work fine. Should. So we'll worry about that a bit later. 
We'll set the line buffer to something reasonable. Uh, not, not reasonable. I still want to figure out how I want to deal with this line length. Um, obviously, it's including the... Hmm. It's including the null byte. So what I should probably do there is not increment it because we don't need to increment it for the next loop. And then here, oh, but we do want to, no, no, I'll just leave that troweling thing there but I won't update the position because it is at the actual end. And based on it being at the actual end now, I probably should redo this. No, that should actually be correct now. Okay. Let's just see how this goes. Test. What's up? Um, so that I just... Oh no, that's because it's too long. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so already we're getting some kind of buffer problem. It's not setting the new line. Now, that could be because... Let me just... Yeah, it's because it's not copying the new line, uh, the terminating null. So, what I might do is just add a plus one. And we also want to check if max data or whatever is going to fit this. So we add that and then we do um, data line len plus one equals zero, ah, uh, a null pointer. And that should fix that issue. So let's run bot, test, in, in, why is an eye popping up there in my terminal? Oh, it's sending it back. That's right. So test gives me test back. Okay, it would seem that I actually have the ability to read in lines um, independent of how many packets there are and drop long lines but I'm just going to write um, an error when I drop a long line. Um, how should I do this? Yeah, I'll put it here after this because if it's equal to the um, end of the line, then we should just um, output an error. And this is getting um, really long. Dropping long line. That's column 80. So I'm cutting it close there. Oh, that should have gone after it, I think. No, it shouldn't because it was dropping it. So let's figure out, we have eight characters. So one, two, three, four. One, two, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That should be eight, including the new line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this shouldn't work. Correct. Okay, so we have lines coming in proper, properly. I'm really sure that that should be packet independent. However, I should move this um, 
append code. So let's change this append line buffer. Um, and we'll just set that to pause. And we'll, yeah, put this in its own function. So, um, just put it here for now. Void append line buffer, void. We'll make it an integer and return whether it actually appended it. Um, and we're gonna just, 15, 15, yeah. So we're gonna return one, and then we're gonna return zero down here. And that should be fine. Oh, we didn't take the character. So in, and this should be in here. And this should be in, and this should be character in, ah, oh, sorry, you went to eight in. Um, yes, yeah, so that seems fine. And for policy equals user, I'll just turn this into a for loop, because that's basically what it is. Oh no, that's conditional. So that, yeah. Pause, doesn't equals after, then we append the line buffer like that. Okay, that seems reasonable. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Hmm. So I should have a handle line above this actually. We should have a function that will print out a line. So let's see if this works. Test. Hmm. That's dropping a character. And that's not doing this properly. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, one. What? One, 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 one. That's confusing and I don't understand that bug. So I'm just gonna recheck my code. Pend line buffer. That definitely should be working. So I'm just going to go back here. Ah, that should be plus 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 there. Right, that got nothing already. Okay, test. Ping. I think what's happening there is the line's messed up. So if we do one, two, three, four, and we set it to just one, it should be one, two. 
Mm -hmm. So we're returning the wrong line length. Oh, we're putting more data into it from some kind of buffer that was there before. So we're actually going to just do the, the loop we had before. Because obviously I can't be trusted to do loops. I mean, I was pretty sure that was correct. Hmm, what? Okay, so that's the first system reset we need to do today. Um, I've messed something up big, huh? Oh, I didn't plus plus it. Okay, time to bot this up. Test T. Okay, so it's still the same issue. Now, that means I can put my for loop back. So for nothing. No, that shouldn't be a for loop. Oh yes, it should. So let's put that back and let's check out what I've messed up here. So in that, hmm. So this, this block here shouldn't be a problem. I don't see anything wrong with this code. So I'm just going to actually add some velocity here. Loading into buffer. And let's see what actually gets copied to the buffer. If it's having too many um, if it's having too many things copied to it, then we should see it then. Oh, oops, I type in here, don't I? So it loads everything into the buffer properly. Then if I just do T, mm -hmm, it loads the correct stuff into the buffer. 
Um, I'm actually going to redo that and just check real quick. We'll move that closer to the right. Um, writing x into buffer at pos x and that can be line pos minus line buffer and we'll just put zero there and here we'll put in and that'll give us some more verbosity that we can use to figure things out One, two, three, four. And so that should say there's four because that's how, that's the length. Now, if I do that, position zero, one, and the outgoing. So this is a problem in the outgoing code, I believe. Ah, uh, this is zero indexed. Just, just delete me. Cancel me. Put me in all of the trash. Test. Ing. What's up? Okay, perfect. And let's... Yeah, all right, so. Delete that, delete that. Oops, yeah. So we have line buffering in working. And we don't really need, well, we just need to have an output buffer for our code. So we're nearly finished here. Um, we could just use the line buffer as the input. That would be fine. We could have a single line buffer for input. So, let's change handle line to send line. send line so we might actually have our buffering set up today then oops test okay so our buffering is set up so we're going to actually just do handle line and set that to send line um, and we'll change this send line here is handle line and so this is where the bot code will go okay I think that might be it for today um, what's line end? Do I use that? Yeah. Okay, so in the future, we're going to have some code here. Um, you know what? Just to see, let's do if um, line buffer zero equals uh, a bang, then we'll send the line back. Otherwise, we'll do nothing. 
And so we've made a kind of command echo bot. So we write stuff in, so nothing happens, but if we put a bang in front of it, it outputs it. Okay, so this is probably the last stream about network handling, because from now on, we're just going to be writing the actual bot stuff, which would be here. And as you can see, we're going to just have to write this in assembly and do some stubs. At least that's what I would like to do. So thank you all for joining me. See you around.